Welcome to this week's Future Toolbox podcast. We explore the Z to A of life skills, where each letter stands for a topic and essential tool to help you get ahead in life. Meet Jules and Mark, creators of the multi-award winning Future Toolbox, and enjoy their straightforward approach to creating growth mindsets that help people turn their dreams into realities. Whether you're a teen in education, a parent, a teacher, or part of a community group, start creating positive habits from today. Hello and welcome to today's podcast from Mark and Jules of the award-winning Future Toolbox. And Mark, what is the subject today? Yes, today is B for balance. And we're not going to get these people to do any really sort of weird balancing moves or anything like that. No, but I am actually balancing standing on one leg at the moment for some bizarre reason. But there you go. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, now you said that, so am I. I don't know why I am, but uh, yeah, what's B is for balance? What are we going to be talking about today? Well, in this month, we have National Work-Life Balance Week. So what we wanted to do is discuss how your work-life balance has such a huge impact on your mental health and hopefully give you ways that you can keep the balance equal. So a work-life balance, you know, it, 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 it's about equally dividing and prioritising the time that you spend on your work demands and also your personal life. So yeah, about setting limits, understanding your daily routine and making sure it aligns with what your goals are and what's really, really important to you. But equally, this is not just when we say work, it's not just people that are working, it's anybody that um, is in any t- any form of education as well, whether that be school, college, university, it's getting your life balance as good as it can be for mm. your mental health. Now you've got some brilliant statistics on this that you're gonna share, and he loves statistics, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, welcome. It's Mr. Stato Mark here. Yeah, I do love my statistics. But did you realize that we all have 168 hours in a week? Now, sometimes people say they have too much time, but most people say there's not enough hours in the day. Well, we all have 160 hours a week and the average person generally sleeps for about a third of their life. So that is about 56 hours a week that you'll spend asleep. Now, okay, we are talking about teens here. They tend to try and stay up all night, don't they? Yeah, come on, teens, if you're listening, (laughs) admit that one there. And if Uh, you know, (laughs) or if you've got a teenager that doesn't, please do let us know. (laughs) Yeah, what's the secret there? And what do you guys do? Uh, We know that anyway. We work with enough teens. But yeah, so let's say you sleep for about 56 hours. That leaves us with 112 hours a week left. That sounds an awful lot of time, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, if you're a student at, say, school or university, you're probably going to study for about an average of 25 hours a week, give or take. If you're an adult in employment, the average working week is around about 40 hours. Yes. Now, please don't all shoot your comments in here and say, <laughs> well, I do overtime, I do 60 hours, or 40 hours, I'd love to do that. But let's let's base that on, say, 25 to 40 hours a week. So that gives you somewhere between 72 and 87 hours left okay i'm gonna round things off because i like simplicity as well we like simple things don't we always (laughs) yeah (laughs) so that leaves us with about 80 hours a week left so how do you guys spend your 80 hours and that is the big question if we look at what you do with your time 80 hours a week that still sounds like an awful lot of time do you think that's the reason that we waste some of the time because you think Mm. oh I've got all of this time but if we look at some of the the ways that we do actually waste this valuable time that we've got for example that mobile phone oh my goodness (laughs) yeah that mobile phone absolutely brilliant inventions but oh my gosh are they time stealers so did you know on average people spend six to seven hours a day on their phone six to seven hours that is ridiculous isn't it what a waste of time that is but yeah that's actually just made me think of a friend who used to spend so much time arguing with people on twitter and engaging in pointless conversations and i remember one day he told me that he deleted his twitter account he had to really really go straight into his twitter account and just close the whole thing down and delete it, delete his username, delete all the history and everything. And he got his time back. 
That's a great story. The fact that he recognised it and did something about it. And this is something that we're going to discuss a little bit more today is like recognising where you waste your time. And let's talk about TikTok. <laughs> let's talk about TikTok. Who told me about TikTok? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, when TikTok first came out, I did not get it. I did not understand it and refused to have anything to do with it. <laughs> Didn't I? And I, yeah. and I would. And the whole family would be like, no, 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 you need to, you need to do it. Well, how long ago was it I actually decided to have a little look on TikTok? And yesterday is a great example. Mark was out on a course all day. I had the whole day to myself, loads of ideas of what I was going to get done until I opened up that app, TikTok. (laughs) And you've done it. I know you're going to be laughing and thinking, yeah, I've done that. I open it up and I think, oh, I'm just going to have a little look while I have a cup of tea. And seriously, an hour has gone easily easily before you even know it what an absolute waste of time however it isn't all a complete waste of time there's a lots of stuff on tiktok that even i've said oh that's a brilliant idea or i've got recipes or it's given us resources that we can use so it's not all a waste of time but you can spend a lot of time on it see the truth's just coming out here right when i got home yesterday and i said what have you been up to today you said i've had a really really busy day i did say i faffed you did say you faffed a little bit so an hour on tiktok well spent there i'm sure absolutely absolutely (laughs) no i've got no excuse i didn't gain anything from it yesterday apart from some relaxation (laughs) but another thing that can also sort of waste your time is not being organized isn't it so if you're disorganized you actually become ineffective a little bit like what i did yesterday i wasn't as effective as i would normally be but you know you've got your to-do list And you think to yourself, right, okay, I'm going to go and do that. And then you'll find something else to do. So you start procrastinating this chief (laughs) stealer of time. Yeah, I mean, I I used to be really good at procrastination, but I just don't get around to it these days. Oh, Oh, he's so funny. But yeah, yeah, I'm an expert on that. Massive expert. I think you've got, yeah, you've got a GCSE in it, haven't you? Yeah, if I, if it was a qualification, I would be a top star student on that. But running our own business, I have to get a lot better at that. Procrastination is really weird, though, because what is it about deadlines? We're given a deadline. It's like, oh, this has got to be in by the end of the month. So what I'll start doing is I'll work on it on the 28th. <laughs> I won't work on day. it. I'll leave, I'll leave it four weeks, then work on yeah. it in four weeks' time. Somebody might as well have said, do you know what? It's got to be in by the end of this week. Actually, give me it today because then we wouldn't procrastinate. But I was liking this. I'm a massive football fan and, and we're, we're in Northampton. Now. I'm a big fan of the Cobblers and I've watched Northampton Town everywhere all over the country and obviously watched football on tv we even went to seville to watch them we did indeed wow do you remember that i do that was a fantastic week wasn't it love that i'd say we're procrastinating on the point now that's true (laughs) (laughs) we're certainly detracting from it but yeah in football the thing i always notice is say the cobblers are losing one nil for instance and whether you understand football or not a goal will get them back in the game it'll get them a point And then you get to the sort of last few minutes and you go into injury time or stoppage time. And then suddenly this team that have been playing really poorly, and I'm not saying the Cobblers always play really poorly, they're doing really well at the moment. But this team are playing really poorly, then give it their all and go all out to try and score a goal. And it's because that last few minutes come up and it's that deadline thing. And we seem like we're drawn to this as human beings. There's a deadline. Let's leave it till the last minute. It's a way of stealing your time. And also, one of the other things that will steal your time is worrying about unnecessary things. Now, we're all brilliant at that. I don't think there's anybody that doesn't sit there and think, oh my gosh, what about this? I do it. I wake up in the middle of the night and start thinking about something that's going to possibly happen in the next day or the next week. And before you know you know it, again, that time has been taken away of worrying about something that, do you know what, hasn't even happened. Mm. Um, it could be things that you could hear like negative news and you start worrying about that. But I'm going to give you a statistic here because oh, this is no. one, this is one that, I, that. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really like and use it a lot is... Did you know that 90% of the things that you worry about don't actually happen? So that's a huge amount of time wasted worrying unnecessarily. Yeah, do you know what? That's just reminded me of a story. I met a lady on a training course recently 
and she was saying, have you seen this program on, on Netflix? I can't remember what it was called. But she said, oh, this guy uh, murdered somebody in Subway. And she said, that's put me off going Subway now. Then when she said it, she burst out laughing going, how many people actually get murdered in Subway? This is a really grim subject, isn't it? So because you've seen something on the TV, you start worrying about it. And I'm going to be honest with you, I've, I've been worrying about doing these podcasts when we first started doing it. Well, yeah, what if they don't work? What if nobody listens to them? And now I know that you're all listening, aren't you? Please. You are all <laughs> listening. Me. But yeah, we, you know, we worry about stuff that we can't control a lot, don't yeah. we? Yeah. 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 Worrying about the uncontrollables is such a, um, a time stealer. Definitely. So let's go back to this work-life balancing. Now, we talked about people who do 40 hours a week. Yeah. Some do 50, some do 60, some mm. do more. I, I know friends that sometimes do 100 hours a week, and that's that's crazy. But the one thing to, to think about is whatever you're doing, whether you're, you're a student doing those 25 hours in study, the 40 hours, or the 100, are you prioritizing your work before yourself? So think about that question. Are you prioritizing your work before yourself? And it's always worth the key point of thinking, if you do this, then you will burn out and you'll make yourself ill if you don't take care of yourself. And and you had a really big experience of this many years ago, didn't you? Yes, I did. Unfortunately, I found myself as a single parent for a long period of time. And I had absolutely no choice in those days, but I had to go out to work. I needed money. I needed I needed to keep a roof over our head. I needed to be able to feed my children. So I went to work, started part time, uh, went on to full time. And I'll be honest, I eventually found a job that I absolutely, absolutely loved. And it was within the travel industry, which is something that's very, very close to my heart. But I would come home from work and I couldn't actually fulfill my duties that I needed to do within that time that I was at work. So I'd get home, I'd have my time with my children, we'd go off and we'd walk the dog, I'd cook the dinner, I'd clean the house, I'd do the washing, I'd do the ironing, put the kids to bed and guess what I would do then? Not every night but most nights I would have brought some work home with me and I would sit and I would do it. And some nights it was literally 11, 12 o'clock before I went to went to bed. So they were very long days. I used to get up at five o'clock in the morning to walk the dog, do all the things, get all the kids ready, get into school and do this. But it just left me with this horrible, empty feeling of there's got to be more to life than this. Because I literally just felt that's all I did was work, go to bed, get up, go back to work do all of that and I knew that it was wrong but at that point I really couldn't see any answers I know it's really really tough isn't it that breaks my heart hearing that because obviously you went through it but there's loads and loads of people who are probably sitting there listening thinking how on earth am I going to change this but we found a a phrase that says all work and no play makes you sad and grey I was sad and grey oh sad and (laughs) grey and lonely yeah (laughs) So all work and no play makes you sad and grey. But that reminded me of a story about a lady I met quite a few years ago. And she was in a very, very similar situation where she's, she was a single parent, working really, really hard, trying to make ends meet, trying to pay the bills. God, I think she had two or three kids. I can't remember. Don't, don't quote me on the number. But some of her friends said to her one day, right, we're, we're arranging a spa day. Come along to this spa day. You, you deserve this time for yourself, this treat. And at the very last minute, she rang a friend up and cancelled and said, I'm, I'm not coming today because that's it's just selfish. The kids need me today. It's my weekend with them and so on. And she got talked into it by her friends to, to actually go and have this spa day. And that really just makes me think it was a bit of self-care. It was that, that moment of time for her. And self-care isn't selfish. You need to do it. When you get on a plane, the cabin crew always tell you to put your oxygen mask on before the person sitting next to you. So look after yourself before you look after them. And sometimes it's really, really easy to think somebody else needs me more. So think to yourself, what could you do as a little bit of self-care? And maybe we can think of some ideas of that in a moment. So we now know we have this wonderful 80 hours every single week. So what are you going to do in these this time for your self-care? and your mental health. Now, one of the things that I like doing, and I try and do this every single day, is go for at least a 20 to 30 minute walk every day. Mm, You could run, you can jog, you can cycle, doesn't matter. But just getting outside, getting outside in the fresh air. But one of the things that I 
love about when you walk in it gives you the time to be to able to to look around and notice the nature and the beauty that's around there at the moment it's really really lovely with the change of the season oh, going yeah, on and the, the amazing, leaves isn't it? And, yeah. and everything and the different smells that are around it's mm. just just amazing and then one of the other great things that I love doing is taking an amazingly lovely, long, relaxing bath, putting some bath salts in there, I mean that lovely smells and laying there. But massive big top tip here, if you're going to go for this relaxing bath, do not take your phone because you'll go on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> and before you know it, you've gone all wrinkly and the water's cold. <laughs> and you watch a lot of pointless videos as well, I'm sure. Another massive one as well is to think about traveling. Now, obviously, we love traveling around the world and we love planning our travel as, as much as we love going on it. It's obviously better going on it, but the traveling's exciting. But think about commuting. A lot of people, again, yeah. we talked about time stealers, driving to and from work, maybe if you're getting the bus or the train, or even if you're walking. Yeah. And people sit there on, on the bus. I notice sometimes they'll just sit there on their phone or sit on the tube or whatever whenever we go to London. Or when they're driving, they'll just put the, the news on and listen to all the negative stuff that comes out. So think about how you can spend that time. Now, one thing we say a lot to students is uh, a company that we really, really love to endorse is GCSE Pod. And one of the things that a student could do when they're, they're studying for their GCSEs is they could go on GCSE Pod, listen to a pod, and learn a little bit about what they're trying to study. And talking to podcasts... How about instead of listening to the negative news, listen to a really, really useful podcast like the Z2A of Live Skills from Future Toolbox, for instance? Yeah, oh, it's a really good <laughs> idea. So, yeah, when you're traveling, you know, use that time wisely, if you can do, and safely, <laughs> <laughs> to, to listen to something like that yeah, and yeah. make good use of that time. What else? What else? What else? Creativity. That's another one. That, oh. what, what about the creativity? We, we love art. We love creating. We're writing. But yeah, I, I love nothing more than just sitting there and losing myself in writing some content for a book or drawing, sketching, artwork. You love your painting, don't you? I do. And Jules is amazing at painting, but she has a bit of imposter syndrome sometimes. <laughs> Very much <laughs> We're talking so. about imposter syndrome in another podcast. Yeah, so getting, getting, getting creative, creative getting bring creative out your creative as well. side, yeah. that is really good. <laughs> but also something else for self-care is looking after what you're actually putting inside your body. So yes. eating healthy food. And I mentioned in the, the last podcast or this one, I can't remember now, <laughs> about drinking water and how good, how good that is for you as opposed to lots of caffeine or fizzy drinks. But yeah, even creating healthy food, I find that really relaxing and then sitting down and, and, and eating it. But at the same point, one of the things that I just love saying to people, it's great looking after yourself and eating healthy, but do the 80-20 rule. So 80% of your time, look after yourself. 20% of the time, do you know what? Eat that biscuit, have that bit of cake. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Can I have some chocolate? <laughs> oh, Mark has more than 20% of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Don't spill the beans now. So there you have it. 168 hours a week. Maybe you have... 70, 80 hours spare. We don't have those hours spare, do we? But it's all about prioritising your time, isn't it? It is. So I hope that you found this podcast useful and we've managed to give you some ideas, some tools and tips on how you can start prioritising your time to make more time for yourself. So where can they find this podcast and all of our useful tools and tips? Yeah, so uh, go to our website, which is futuretoolbox.co.uk. Uh, you'll also find our blog on there with loads and loads of useful content and summaries of what we're sharing with you today. Uh, you can also find our toolboxes on the website. And of course, we're on social media. Where else will we be? So we're on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, of course. TikTok. Watch some useful videos. And you can also find us on YouTube. And we look forward to seeing you in the next podcast. Thank you for joining us for the Z2A of Life Skills with Jules and Mark of the Future Toolbox. Don't forget to head over to their website, which is futuretoolbox.co.uk, where you can find lots of free resources, plus a host of books in the store, as well as subscribing to the membership site. Follow Future Toolbox Instagram, TikTok and Facebook at Future Toolbox and subscribe to their YouTube channel too.